Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks with. Today, we're talking with Kara Conway, Public Relations and Social Media Coordinator at Pose with a Cause, an organization that enhances the independence and quality of life for people with disabilities through custom-trained assistant dogs. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about an organization that is increasing awareness of the rights and roles of assistant dog teams through education and advocacy. Hello, Kara. Welcome to Great.com Talks. We're excited to have Hi. you. Thank you so much for having us. Could you please describe your organization for someone who is not familiar with your work? Absolutely. We at Pause with a Cause custom train assistance dogs for people with disabilities. We are giving our clients the opportunity to live their life with competence, companionship, and dignity. We train four different types of assistance dogs, service dogs for people with mobility disabilities. So that's kind of what you think of when you think of a service or an assistance dog, a dog that opens doors, picks up dropped objects, hearing dogs for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Seizure response dogs for our clients that may have may have epilepsy or other seizure disorders, and lastly, service dogs for children with autism. Mm-hmm. Wow, I've I I have previously heard about assistant uh, dogs, but I've never um, imagined that there the scope of uh, responsibilities, the scope of um, services that can they can provide can range. Um, you mentioned that there are uh, four types of uh, assistant dogs, and could you please um, describe in detail how are each those top types of dogs are making an impact in the lives of people living with certain um, disabilities? As I mentioned, we do train four different types of assistance dogs. So for our clients that have a service dog, they may be in a wheelchair or um, a different type of mobility device. And those dogs are making an impact in their life by picking up dropped objects, opening doors, um, pulling their wheelchair. Those dogs allow their clients to um, have energy on fun things, things they want to do, instead of having to spend all their energy on um, things like their leg falling off their wheelchair and then trying to get it back up. Um, Their dog will do that for them. We've had a client say that before she got her service dog, she would wait till there were 15 to 20 things on the ground that she had dropped before she calling someone over to help her because she didn't want to be a burden on someone else. But now as soon as she drops her pen, her dog is there to pick it up for her. Our hearing dogs are allowing our clients to live confidently and comfortably and just able to relax. If you think about all of the different sounds we hear each day and they really give us a clue to what's happening in our environment. One of our clients, um, she is deaf and she was hanging out in her home. She does have cochlear implants, but she had um, taken her cochlear device off to just kind of relax and decompress. And um, all of a sudden her uncle was in her house and she was kind of taken back by that. And he said, Molly, what are you doing? There's a tornado outside. We need to get down to the basement. But she had no clue because um, she couldn't hear the sirens. But now with Mater, any sound that happens in her environment, her dog is able to tell her. Our service, our seizure response dogs um, are there to take care of our clients after a seizure occurs. A lot of our clients will feel weak after having a seizure and their dog will do a brace command where they stand in front of the client and the client puts pressure on their hips and on their shoulders and presses up to a standing position. Um, some of our dogs will go and get a medical device and this certain medical device, they place it on the client's heart and it actually stops the seizure. Um, gosh, our dogs help in so many ways. But lastly, our service dogs for children with autism are not only impacting the child who has autism, but really um, the whole family. One instance of this is um, our client, Cal, and his mother were live, had to live separately from the rest of their family because Cal um, was just providing too much of a stressful environment for the siblings and the dad. So they moved in with grandma. But once Cal got his service dog for children with autism, Artie, the family was able to um, be a family again. They were able to move in together. And the parents slept for the first time through the night alone in nine years because they didn't have Cal coming in. 
Wow, the stories that you indicated, uh, they're very heartwarming. <laughs> Realizing that um, dogs can make such a difference in the lives of people living with disabilities and take a burden off from their shoulders at, at the same time saving lives. If you, you mentioned the story with the tornado, if it wasn't for a dog, uh, her brother wouldn't come in or her uncle and uh, she wouldn't um, have a means to know about what's happening outside and uh, find a place to um, be surrounded in a safe zone. So that's quite very heartwarming to understand, to realize that dogs can make such a huge difference. I know that your organization also um, has uh, trained facility dogs. Could you please describe what are facility dogs and uh, what kind of services do those uh, dogs provide? We have just recently started placing facility dogs and we are so excited about this new program. We know that our dogs are bred for a purpose and they want to work. And so we are always looking for new avenues where they can reach their highest purposeful placement. And we know that dogs help people like the stories I just shared. So we have recently started placing facility dogs, which are dogs that help a number of people instead of just one like our assistance dogs do. So you can see facility dogs in the classroom or a hospital, really any of those group settings. We are really focusing on classrooms right now and we have seen a great results from it. Um, one teacher said, maple is the one thing we never knew we needed. These dogs help children in the classroom. Um, they help them with reading. The child will actually hold a treat while they follow the words and the dog looks like they're reading along with them, and the kids love that. The dog provides them a safe space to feel comfortable and a listening ear that's not going to fit you. Mm -hmm. Are those, um, the classroom that you mentioned, is this um, uh, just a regular classroom, or is it a classroom where students with autism or students with disabilities learn? It depends on the school. Most of our um, placements right now, they use the dog throughout many classrooms. So Maple will visit kids in the mainstream classroom, but also kids that are in a different type of a learning environment. We just placed a dog whose home base is in the counselor's office at the school and kids will come and visit, um, visit her there. So it's really wherever the school um, needs to use the dog most. And the funny thing is the staff is a lot of times more excited about this new addition to the team than the students are. The students are of course excited, but it um, brings another level of positivity and relief for the staff as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I, I can imagine like coming to the work and seeing a happy dog there and a dog that is engaged in the classroom. And for sure, either you're a student or you're a, a faculty member or you're a teacher, you'll definitely get the sense of positivity and energy boost from a dog. And that's a definitely. Wonderful. Who doesn't see a dog and smile? <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, let's talk about uh, the training of um, how you train these assisting dogs. I can imagine it must be um, a long process. Can you please describe um, the lens of this program or the details of the program with us? The whole training process takes between two and three years, and it actually starts at around eight weeks old. So even sometimes before that. All of our dogs are born in volunteer homes and they will house the mama dog, whelp the puppies, and then raise the whole litter of puppies for the first eight weeks. And while they're in that home, they're working on little things like if you want to get picked up, make sure all four of your paws are on the floor. So really the training starts at the newborn stage. After that, they get turned into paws at around eight weeks and assigned to a volunteer foster puppy raiser. So we are always looking for volunteers to open their hearts and their homes to a pause puppy. And you have this puppy from eight weeks till they're about 12 to 16 months old. And while you have them, you're teaching them basic obedience, like sit and down and stay. But also um, basic socialization. So that's the really fun part when you get to take your puppy to the grocery store with you or to church or the doctor's office. Getting that dog to be comfortable in a variety of different situations. But what we always tell our volunteers is that you are giving this puppy a loving home to learn and to grow and to learn how to then love another person. After they're about 12 to 14 months old, they come back to pause where they start their advanced training. We are looking at the dog's health and temperament 
and what the dog likes to do to decide what career path they will take. So whether they'll go on to be placed as an assistance dog, as a facility dog, or maybe work in a number of different components, such as an arson detection dog or um, a police dog, or maybe to a different organization um, that trains a different type of disability that we don't serve. Um, our training takes, that specialized training takes between six to eight months. And that's when the dog is learning tasks like hearing an ambulance or opening a door. All of our dogs are custom trained to their clients. So we are speaking with our clients to see what their lifestyle is like down to how high are the light switches on their wall because we want to make this dog the perfect match. Um, I like to think of it as I love my fiance, but my fiance may not be a good fit for you. <laughs> and that's because we all have different needs and matches um, in our lives. Once the dog is placed with a client, the training doesn't stop there. We have field representatives in all of the areas where we place dogs, where they actually work with the client in their home. So we've trained the dog, but now we need to train the human how to work with the dog. Um, after about six to eight months, they will become certified. And that's when we see them as a strong working team. So it is no short process to train a assistance dog. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, the process, although it seems very long, but um, um, in for us, it might not seem long, two to three years, but in terms of a dog years, that might be a school year. Yeah. Uh, what for us is like the 12 years of high school, that may be for them the uh, 12 years of a dog right. of a high school. So it's quite interesting that you place them uh, in foster homes, so they get to interact uh, before their advanced training with the people and uh, from eight weeks they understand um, the environment, the people, the feelings of the people. So it's a great, I, I believe it's a great foundation for them to under, uh, to build a connection uh, with human, uh, understand the human connection and then the advanced training you mentioned. It, uh, it all depends on the uh, the career path that the dog, uh, based on their skill set, based on their nature, that can be built on. Um, you mentioned um, that uh, the dogs are customized um, for the per client uh, for based on their needs and. I just wanted to um, confirm. So each uh, do specific types of breeds of dogs can be assistant dogs or any type of dogs can be an assistant dog? At PAWS, we breed four different types of breeds. We use Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, Standard Poodles, and Papillons. So our Papillons are only used as hearing dogs. And that's because they only get to be about nine pounds and um, I don't know about you, but I don't think Poppy could pull a wheelchair. <laughs> so, you know, nine pounds just isn't big enough to do that. So we do offer a small breed um, as a hearing dog, but all of the other different breeds that we use can be placed in all four of our assisted um, dog areas. Mm -hmm. So um, those four types of dogs, are there um, naturally... Uh, more keen uh, to be of... Um, um help rather yeah. than any taking any like uh, uh, any other dog we use our certain breeds um for a number of different reasons but labrador retrievers and golden retrievers it's in their name they like to retrieve so that is really helpful for us when they need to be picking up dropped objects or opening the door it's all building off of that retrieve task you know having something in your mouth bringing it to the human um and they like to work, they're people pleasers, they enjoy working, and we wanna use breeds of dogs that enjoy working and are bred to work. We use our standard poodles because they are so smart, but they're also a hypoallergenic breed. So um, no dogs are 100% hypoallergenic, but we find that our standard poodles are um, hypoallergenic enough where they won't bother a client that has allergies. And for our Papillons, they are actually the most trainable toy breed. Um, so that's why we use them. And they have really big ears. Um, so they're very good at their hearing job. <laughs> Absolutely. I can see uh, the benefit both uh, for that specific breed of dog and uh, for the people you mentioned. Uh, the retrievers, they are people pleasers now they, being through the assistant, prog um, assistant dog program. Uh, they can uh, fulfill what uh, brings them joy at the same time, um, help make a change in the life of the person with dis disability. 
could you please uh, uh, describe um, or tell um, how many uh, dogs uh, do you work with? Uh, what's the scale of them? Do you um, are you based in one location or do you work nationwide across United States? We were founded 40 years ago, and in that time, we've placed over 1,300 assistance dogs across the country. We are based in Michigan in the Grand Rapids area, but we have clients, again, across the country. Our focus is on east of the Mississippi River right now, um, and we are placing between 50 and 70 assistance dogs a year, um, but we place more than just that, we also are placing facility dogs as well as um, purposely placed dogs in other different careers. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, how? What does your organization hope to wish uh, in the upcoming years and uh, what kind of impact do you want to make in the lives of uh, people living with disabilities as well in the lives of dogs? We believe that dogs change lives and our goal is to change the life as as many people as we can. So we are always looking for opportunities to serve our clients or expand our services, like I said, with our facility dog program to be able to help more people. Um, we are, we all of our dogs are placed um, free of charge to our clients with disabilities and um, we're always looking for, you know, raising more money to be able to place more dogs. 89% of our funding comes from individual donors. We do get some money from, you know, small family grants or foundations, um, but we don't get any government help or insurance aid to cover these programs. So I'm um, just sharing the word, you know, if people can tell someone about our organization that helps us immensely or follow us on social media, check out our website. All of those things are so important to a nonprofit. Oh, absolutely. You mentioned several ways that people can uh, support uh, the wonderful work that you and your organization are doing. Um, if someone would like to support you, you mentioned that they can go on their, on your website, uh, they can uh, familiarize themselves on your social media presence. Um, what else can they do to help support you? Yeah, I'm talking to people about us. If you hear this podcast and either someone you know who needs a assistance dog or someone who's a dog lover, please connect to them um, with our website, causewithacause.org. You can support us financially on there. Um, if you want to hold, you know, maybe you work for a business that has a jeans day. Uh, if you want to have us be the beneficiary of jeans day, we would love that. It takes $35,000 to place a single assistance dog. So anything makes a difference. You can find us on social media. We're very active on Facebook at Pause with a Cause. We're also on LinkedIn and Instagram as well. Wonderful. For you listening, if you would like to make a contribution or would like to learn more about uh, the great work that Pause is a Cause is doing, the link to, the, to their website and the donate page will be provided in the description so you can take action. Thank you so much, Kara. It was wonderful to get to know you and I applaud your organization for the great work that you guys are doing in changing the lives of people living with disabilities. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. For you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and podcast algorithm that this conversation is important, that assistant dogs can make a difference in the life of people living with disabilities and can improve the quality of lives and make them feel much more safe. Thank you and see you in the next episode.